Welcome back. This is hour number two with Talking Primetime coming to you live from the Edison Ale House. Steps from the Prudential Center in the heart of downtown Newark. The Devils hosting the New York Islanders tonight. Lots of Devils fans, lots of Islanders fans here on site. Uh, we've got the uh, Road Ice Travels group, the Islanders uh, fans group. A couple guys just came up and said what's going on. Guys that I met at Hurley's Irish Pub uh, earlier this year. A reminder that uh, there's lots of drink specials. $4 pints of Coors Light. $20 Coors Light beer towers. And uh, we go into hour number two of the show with my next guest. Hey, a regular here on Hockey Primetime, but usually on the telephone. Yes. From uh, obscure locations all over the place. You're right. always moving around. Dave I'm, Lozo. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be in a stationary place where they're serving alcohol and chicken wings and towers of beer. Those are, yeah, those are sort of three uh, pillars of, uh, <laughs> of life, I think, really. And, and so glad that, uh, glad that you could be here with me. Uh, so what's been going on? I, I haven't seen you since, uh, since All-Star Weekend in Columbus. Have, yeah. you been, have you been keeping well? I've been doing okay. I, uh, I basically destroyed my body in Columbus for like six days because yeah. I got stuck oh, there. you stayed for so long. Yeah, hey. I, I got there Thursday. I didn't leave till Wednesday of the following week. And I, I feel like I went down a path of drinking and chicken wings that, like, spiraled out of control. So I've been trying to eat healthy the last, say, 30 days or so. It's Have not really? really working. Yeah. No, it's, it, it's over for me. I'm too old to lose weight. I'm too old to look good with no shirt on. So this is it. This is it for me. The, the key thing is just to wear a shirt. Well, I mean, to be fair, I like to be free. I'm, I'm kind of like Putin in that way, where I like to kind of just, you know, roam free. And the, be... the Russian prime minister. Yes, yes. I mean, not in his di dictatorial ways, but in his shirtless, proud ways. I kind of want to be that guy. Yeah, you like to fish for salmon in rivers, wearing yeah. high I, boots and I, I, nothing I, else? I ride horses bareback. Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'm an outdoorsy guy. Well, I mean, there's something to be said for that, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, and uh, look, you've come to the right place. Yes. I mean, here we are surrounded by the beauty of nature. It is quite festive. I'm really worried. I'm really worried about the girl with the John Tavares jersey on. I'm afraid she's going to fall off that bar. Oh still no! I, maybe. I mean, look, there's still a lot of time to go. You got to. There is a beer tower there. Uh, this is Dave Lozo. I'm Connor McKenna, and uh, we are surrounded by Islanders fans. What do you think? Who's who's winning the battle here? I oh, mean, the Islander fans are for sure. It seems like it, eh? I mean, Devil fans are putting up a good fight, but I mean, like I said, the girl in the Tavares jersey is really leading the crowd in a way that there's no real leader for the Devils. You're a big Giants fan. Yes. Could you see yourself doing what she's doing right now at a Giants-related event? I, I, am, I will drink heavily at a tailgate for a Giants game, but I will be quiet the entire time. I'm usually not the guy standing and cheering and saying, get up off your feet. I hate that person at sporting events, so I, I'm, never, I'm never that guy. So you, don't, so you don't like her? Maybe. All right. So the Islanders keep losing. Is that, uh, that going to continue? Uh, is this a sign of things to come, or are they going to be okay? I think they'll be okay. They played so much without Nick Letty. Yaroslav Halak's been out. They've been so good all year. I just think they're kind of going through that midseason little lull. Every team has a bad two weeks during the season. I mean, Pittsburgh's had a bad two weeks recently. Um, Montreal. Montreal. I mean, they had a bad, like, two days, really. I mean, they just keep finding ways to win all the time. Uh, they were pretty bad after the trade deadline. They yeah. they beat Phoenix, and they, they lost five out of six and only yeah. beat Phoenix. Yeah, Nashville's kind of had a little low. Like, but the Islanders are still, I think they're a four-line team. they got a good goaltender. As long as Halak's healthy, as long as Letty and Boychuk, I think Letty and Boychuk are the engine to that team. As long as those two guys are healthy, I think they can pretty much beat anybody four out of seven in the playoffs. And really, eh? So I mean, if what's let's let's let me ask you this: What's the best case scenario matchup wise for the Islanders in the playoffs? You know what? Like three weeks ago, I would have told you it was the Rangers because they just really speed bagged them the first three games, and then the fourth game, the Rangers kind of rallied there late. But the last game was really even, so I feel like the Rangers in the playoffs. They kind of know how to win, so I don't know. I think the best matchup for them in the first round is probably Pittsburgh because they don't really have – their depth is better at Pittsburgh. Their bottom two lines are – they're improved, but they're still not good. So I think top to bottom, the Islanders are probably better there, and you have Flurry who can implode at any moment. And the Islanders kind of own the Penguins, so I would – if I'm an Islander fan, I want to face the Penguins in round one. What was the bigger offseason ad? Was it was it Boychuk, was it Letty, or was it Yaroslav Halak? What, what was the most significant – difference-making addition of the three? Yeah, that's a tough question because they did so, I mean, like, Kuhlman, Grabowski, I mean, they added yeah. so many guys at so many different positions. They made their entire team so much better, but um, yeah, I'm going to say, I'll say Halak because I feel like as good as Boychuk and Letty have made that team, 
if you have a guy back there who's not making saves. I mean, you see when Chad Johnson was playing, I mean, he couldn't stop any pucks. So if you have a guy like Minnesota, you know, Minnesota plays a really great game, but when, when Darcy Kemper couldn't stop anything, when Backstrom couldn't stop anything, that killed them. And so Crazy. I think for the Islanders, the fact that they have a guy back there that can stop, you know, 92% of the shots, I think that's the big difference for them this year. It's uh, Hockey Primetime on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Connor McKenna with Dave Lozo right now. I'm with you until 7 o'clock. Dave's sticking around for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. And, uh, yeah, the Islanders girls still standing on the stool. Yep. Very impressive. Uh, living dangerously. Living very dangerously. It's uh, the Islanders taking on the New Jersey Devils at the uh, Prudential Center tonight. You go to many games there? Have you been there uh, many times? Um, I was there a lot last season. I think I've been there like three or four times this season. I, I, the Devils just... I'm usually at the Garden. I mean, the Rangers are a better team. You kind of want to be around the team. That's good. But, I mean, the Devils the Devils are so weird because they have Corey Schneider, who's having a Vezina-type season most seasons, and the Devils have been eliminated from the playoffs now for, like, six weeks. It's so weird. And he's been really good oh. in 2015. Yeah. His numbers have been, like, 943, something like that. Right. Uh, he's got a 929 for the season. I mean, it's rare that you can find an example of a goaltender who's leaned on to the extent that he is, who has a save percentage as good as he right. does, that's on a team that's under well underperforming, that's not performing well. Right, and I think the only other guy who compares is Roberto Luongo back in Florida days, his first Florida days. I think he had like a 920-something, 927, and he missed the playoffs. But huh. I like the Devils so much this season to make the playoffs anyway because of Corey Schneider. And Corey Schneider's done more than I ever thought he would do, and yet somehow the Devils just – I mean – Pete DeBoer, when he was here, just he would never turn to the kids like Adam Larson or Jelena. I mean, he gave a long rope to John Merrill, but I mean, Adam Larson, his rookie year was so good, and then the, the Devils got good. They went to the playoffs, went to the Cup final, and pretty much from that moment on, he kind of just leaned on veterans. Like he put Peter Harold in the lineup over Eric Jelena and Adam Larson. So I think that was the one big change was they brought in this triumvirate of coaches over here, and they've gone to the young kids, and they've been pretty much. I think they've been playing at like a 94-point pace since they fired Pete DeBoer. And like you said, Corey Schneider has been like as good as Carey Price has been all season. Since Pete DeBoer has been fired, like Corey Schneider has been at that level, but the Devils just, they just don't score goals. Do you think that under Lou Lamorello they can get this team on track? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, every year there's always a bad team that makes the playoffs. I mean, just by definition, 16 out of 30 make it, so there's always going to be that one team that's mathematically below average. And, I mean, look at, like, last year, Colorado was a bad team, got in with Varlamov. Toronto was a bad team two years ago, got in with Bernier. The Devils can be that subpar team that gets in because they have an elite goaltender. But in terms of them being what they were 10 years ago, I just don't see how they've drafted so poorly in the last 10 years. And their, their best draft pick was Zach Parise, and he couldn't wait to get out of here. So they can be a playoff team because they have Corey Schneider, but I would never – think of them as a cup contender the next five years not the next five years no all right yeah three three I'll, I'll guarantee three i don't want to damage the mood in the bar here no one's listening anyway so who's the who's the uh bad team is going to get in this year well it's probably going to be either calgary or vancouver i mean vancouver's not bad vancouver's below average but the bottom of the west is just so weak this year i mean calgary's been just getting by getting dominated possession-wise. Vancouver's been sort of so-so. Vancouver's been the team that's kind of taken advantage of San Jose being bad, Dallas being bad. So every year there's going to be that team. I mean, in the East, I mean, the worst team right now is Boston, but I wouldn't call them a bad team. But, I mean, Calgary's not a good team. I mean, Calgary's been playing without Mark Giordano now for, what, 10 days, five or six games, and they're still finding ways to win. But I can't believe that. It's just unbelievable. Like, you have Derek Englund just – wrapping his, his hands around T.J. Brody's throat and pulling him under, and they still find ways to just... I mean, they were beating Columbus 2-1 last time, I, and they're playing bad teams down the stretch, too. So if they can beat the Torontos and the Flyers and the Columbuses, they can get the 95, 96 points. T.J. Brody, uh, who you just mentioned, so playing with Derek Englund, right? And he's a guy who... Look, even Mark Giordano doesn't necessarily, for me, get the attention he deserves for right. being as good as he is. Right. T.J. Brody definitely doesn't because so many people think... He, the only reason he's good is because he's playing with Mark Giordano. Right. That's if you know who Mark Giordano is. Right. Right? But Brody is, I mean, this guy is a heck of a player, and, and we're seeing it now. He's dragging around Derek Englund, as right. you mentioned, who actually does, well, who actually isn't really that great, yes. right? To say it nicely. <laughs> he's <laughs> but, not that great. But, I mean, T.J. Brody, this guy's one of the more underrated defensemen in the National Hockey League at this I, point. I mean, when I fill out my ballot, he's going to be on it for Norris, no doubt about it. 
Um, he's like Roman Yossi, too. Roman Yossi's a guy who's having an outstanding year in Nashville, but he's paired with Shea Weber. So, like, Shea Weber is the Mark Giordano of that pairing. TJ Brody's really good. I mean, he doesn't have the offensive. That's why Giordano, I think, gets more of a more attention is because he has the better offensive numbers because right. you know how it works. I mean, the Norris Trophy guys are usually one, two, and three in scoring. It's going to be like Latang. Um, who's in the top three in scoring? Brent, if, if Brent Burns gets a Norris vote, I swear I will I will throw away my PHWA card. But you're really? right. You're right. Troy Brody's fantastic. He's he's a, he's such an underrated guy. He plays out west. He plays in Calgary. Doesn't get on NBC Sports ever because of that. But he's he's probably one of the five or maybe even three best defensemen in the NHL. Where's PK Subban on that list? He's up there. I mean, to me, he's a guy that has the points, but he's also. I mean, he's gotten so much better defensively the last two or three years. Even the year he won the Norris Trophy, I think he's playing better overall this year than he did in that 48-game season. But it seems like the sentiment right now is it's Shea Weber's to lose, which is weird because he's not having the usual year that he has, whether it's points, whether it's, you know, possession numbers. He's not doing poorly or anything, but I think people are just sort of like, well, this guy's been so great for so long, we're going to give it to him this year. I mean, to me... A guy like John Carlson in Washington, I mean, you know, Barry Trotz gets all the credit for the system, but, I mean, John Carlson has been fantastic for that team. So the Norris Trophy usually works out where it's a reputation kind of a thing. It's kind of like a long-term, like, hey, Shea Weber's been great for five years. Let's give it to him this year. But if it's between Subban and Weber, I would say Subban's having a better season. Well, but, I mean, could you not also make the case that Yossi is having a better season than Weber? Right. I I would say that he is, whether it's points, whether it's, uh, you know, Fenwick, Corsi, shot attempts. I mean, the, the, the problem is that if you look at their numbers, like I don't know the exact number of minutes they've played together, but if it's like 1,500, if it's 1,500 minutes total for Weber, like Ro- Yossi's played 14, 50 of those. So it's hard to separate wow. those guys, but uh, I, I, I think Subban should be a finalist this it, year. It's interesting, too, though, when you mention Weber, because he hasn't won the Norris Trophy yet, right? And if you say that to a lot of people, they'll be like, what? Right. You kidding me? Right. Of course he's won the Norris Trophy. No, he hasn't. So there's something at, at, at work this year, it seems, where it's like, well, he's never won it before. He, right. He probably should have. But you know who else hasn't won it is Drew Doughty. And I think Drew Doughty's he not? Wow, he's never right, won the right? Norris. Niedermeyer didn't win it until he was 30. And Doughty kind of reminds me of him in a way because he's a really good offensive defenseman, but he plays for the Kings, and he's not going to be that jumping up into like Latang. He's not going to be like that. He's not going to have 78 points at the end of the year. To me, Dowdy's the best defenseman in the league this year. He's playing 30 minutes a night. He's been carrying that team without Willie Mitchell with Voin off out for, you know, his domestic violence situation. He's been so good, but he's like 20th in scoring, so people are just going to be like, hey, well, Chris Latang's got 71 points. Right. Who cares if 55 of them are on the power play? He's such a great defenseman. So so you're saying Latang is not on your Norris ballot? I don't, I, I don't, th- I don't, I know I'm so in the minority on this, like people from Pittsburgh kill me on this, but I don't think he's a really good defender. I think he's a fantastic offensive defenseman, but I would rather have Subban, I'd rather have Yossi, I'd rather have Dowdy. Carlson, Dowdy, but you know, you know how it goes. He's probably going to be a finalist. How much, so it's the PHWA that votes the Norris? Yes. So, I mean, how much, as, as a member of this outfit, uh, <laughs> well, what do you think? I mean, how much, how much out-of-market watching goes on on average? I think it's hard. I mean, if I was a beat writer, if I was with the Chicago Blackhawks, it's just so hard to, like, keep up with what's going on in the Eastern Conference or other teams because you're just, every day, you're at practices, morning skates, you're only focusing on Chicago. Like, Chicago plays L.A., you're probably not going into the Kings locker room. You're probably not watching them on your off nights because, I mean, every day is hockey. Maybe on your off night you want to not watch hockey for a minute. So I think the national people, I think they keep, you know, good tabs on that stuff. But people kind of get tunnel vision. Like in New York for weeks and months, it's like Rick Nash for MVP. And it's like, do you know what Carey Price has done this year? I mean, he's, he's having the best goaltending season in 20 years. But every time Rick Nash scores a goal, Rick Nash for MVP. So it's kind of hard to see the entire league the right way if you're a beat writer but I don't know it's just people get tunnel vision sometimes like that and you're right though I, I mean especially if you're traveling uh, right. that, that's another matter entirely but it, it is hard and and we're talking to Dave Lozo who covers the National Hockey League he's the lead NHL writer for Bleacher Report this is a hockey primetime on Sirius XM uh, NHL Network Radio so Rick Nash not your heart trophy guy then no I mean is he a top 10 is oh, yeah, oh, top is, 10. He's sure. the best. He's the MVP of the Rangers this year. Oh, no, yeah. He's, I mean, he's been, I mean, he's not having a bad season or anything, but it's just, he's been so fantastic for the Rangers. But you take your Rick Nash away, yeah, the Rangers aren't as good, but you take Carey Price away, they're probably like in 24th place in the standings. Like, he, like the Canadians, 
the, the Rangers are a pretty good offensive team without Rick Nash. You take away Rick Nash, you still have Stefan Broussard, Marty St. Louis, Chris Kreider. You have all these guys. And Rick Nash has been fantastic killing penalties, power play. So he, uh, if you're, I'm okay with saying he's a finalist. But, I mean, it's almost as though certain teams or certain people in certain markets just don't know. Because people don't want to vote a goalie for MVP, too. Right. That's also a thing. But, I mean, it's just so hard to ignore what Carey Price has done for a team that's sort of just eh, possession-wise. I mean, he really masks a lot of their issues to the point where they're, they might win the President's Trophy because of him. So he's my, he's my number one guy. This And so you talked about Varlamov earlier and, and what he did carrying the avalanche on his back and, right. and a, an amazing amount of luck involved in the avalanche. I yes. mean, they were shooting the lights out. Yes. Uh, and, and just everything came together for them last year for 82 games and then not so much. But, I mean, can you think of another example of, of the level at which Carey Price is doing this? Is it Jose Theodore in 2002 when he carried the Canadians into the playoffs? Again, though, as an eight seed, right? Right. We're talking about a potential President's Trophy winning team that has been basically above, uh, sorry, below average right. in every possible metric except for goaltending. Right. It's, 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 I mean, I, I can't remember exactly where the Sabres were finishing in the standings those years, but I mean, it's like Dominic Hasek. Like, he's, he's single-handedly winning games for a team that, I mean, they wouldn't be 23rd in the standings with Tokarski in that save, but I mean, they wouldn't be. They they'd probably. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's I, not I, very good. I think <laughs> maybe, maybe they're fighting for 8th or 7th or in the wild card, but it's just the, the year, um, who won the MVP in the lockout year? Was that? Now Tavares was a finalist, but I thought I, I thought Bobrovsky deserved. I mean, Columbus missed, but that Columbus team was Montreal esque in how they were at five on five, and Bobrovsky just had an unbelievable year. But it came up a little bit short. Again, that's how good Carey Price is. Like he's turning a mediocre team into maybe the best team in the league standings wise. I can't you can't ignore that. I don't care if he plays goalie. So what do you think about the Habs going into the playoffs? I think that with Carey Price, the way the East is. I feel like from one to seven, maybe even one to eight at this point, if Ottawa or Boston gets in, whoever it is, it's so even. There's there's really no like standout favorite to me. So if you have the best goalie, I mean that for me that for me was the Rangers last year where it wasn't one to eight, but it was kind of a you know maybe the top four teams in the East. I thought Lundqvist was the difference maker. I think Carey Price is having an even. I mean he's obviously having a better season than Lundqvist last year. So. If they get matched up with maybe anybody but Tampa, Tampa seems to kind of own them when Anders Lindback's not in net. So yeah. <laughs> other than that, I, I, I don't know. I, I'd have a hard time imagining Montreal flaming out in round one unless Carey Price has a bad week. If he has a bad week, the Canadians are in trouble. He could, he could have a 925 week and the Canadians are in yeah, trouble, right? Right, right. Like he needs, to be, he needs to have that Tim Thomas 940, that John Quick 940 two months. And you, he can do it. He can. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, even then, though, the Kings, when Jonathan Quick did that, the Kings were better than the Canadians are, right? Right, right. That's true. I, I don't know. I just, I get killed for this all the time. But luckily, we're out of the market right now, so I don't have to worry too much about yeah. fans are crucifying <laughs> me for it. But I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying it. I, no. I'm buying it. everything that Carey Price is selling. But I can't, I can't buy anything else. Uh, Michel Terry, he scratched Nathan Beaulieu. He's probably the Canadians' third or fourth best defenseman. He scratched yeah. him tonight. Uh, and Jeff Petrie comes back. I like the Petrie acquisition. I mean, it, it, like, the thing about the Montreal Canadiens is I look at them, I look at the personnel that they have, and I say, they should be playing better than they are. There's yeah. no reason they should be 22nd in shots for. There's no reason they should be 23rd in shots against because they have good players. They have P.K. Subban. They have Max Patch ready. They also have a bunch of guys who are not very good. Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Like, I, I, I think it's weird to me that Devontae smith Pelly isn't getting more crucial minutes. I know they moved Dale Weiss down, and Dale Weiss was kind of that top line guy for a month and a half or whatever. He's but off. He's gone. It's yeah. over. The no, honeymoon's I over. I know, but uh, you're... No, I, I don't know if the Canadians... Like, let's say Mike Babcock is coaching that team. Like, the best coach in the league, say. Are they really that much better with... I, I mean, I don't know. I, you guys love Lars Eller. Montreal people talk about Lars Eller all the time, and every time <laughs> I look, he has like 10 games without a point. So, I mean, I know he's been good in the playoffs, but... The idea, it's like, this team has Lars Eller on the third line. It should be so much better. I'm like, Lars Eller has, like, 21 points this year. I mean, he may be a fine player, but I don't know if they're that much better. I mean, they could be better with a different coach, but I still think 
I wouldn't necessarily be worried about any matchup in the East for them just because of Carey Price. They can lose, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't go into any series feeling a lack of confidence if I was a Canadiens fan. It would uh, you give Jack Adams consideration to Michel Therrien? No. <laughs> He's not that good a coach. No? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's going to go to Bob Hartley because they've, they've gotten by on luck all year. That's usually how it works. But isn't it dumb that that, that yes. award has become yes. the award that's given to the coach who coaches the team that most exceeds expectations? Of course. That's how it always is in every sport, like coach of the year in baseball, hockey. It's going to be probably him. Jack Capuano is probably going to get some love, too, even though people thought the Islanders would be better. But I don't know if I'm going to give Michelle Terrian. Not me, I don't vote on that, but I don't know if I would give Michelle Terrian a vote. What's the broadcasters? That's the broadcasters yeah. one, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't, yeah. personally. I, when it comes to the prestige of the, of the NHL awards, since we got into this, sure. the Ted Lindsay Award, like how, how big is that, do you think, for the players to, to be voted the MVP by your peers? By the players. I think, I think that one, I mean, to be fair, I, if I was a player, I would never care what I think about that player ever. If someone's like, hey, Dave Lozo thinks you're the MVP, but like, yeah. who's, who's Dave Lozo? Who is he, some writer? Who right. cares what he thinks? But if, like, Sidney Crosby thinks you're the best player in the league, yeah, I think that means a lot to those guys. It's, But it doesn't seem to get the right. the attention that it might warrant in that situation. I don't know no. if people, if, if maybe there's, like, a fan perception of not really understanding what that award is, but that, to me, is the most prestigious award you can win. I mean, the Lady Bing notwithstanding. Right. Perhaps. I mean, I mean, personally, I think you're the Lady Bing winner of radio. Oh. You are so gentlemanly <laughs> at all times. I just can't get over how oh. it, it might be just a Canadian thing, but I do feel like you are the most polite, generous hockey host. No, but I also do think the NHL has a problem with, uh, I'll say, branding because they, all their, you know, in baseball, it's like you win the MVP. In football, you win the MVP. In hockey, you win the Hart Trophy. And the Ted Lindsay Award is also the same exact thing. But what's? It, I think it gets confusing. I think... That's why when people were like, we're not going to call it Corsi and Fenwick because it's confusing. Meanwhile, this league has renamed its divisions three times in like 20 years. All the trophies are named after guys, which I is fine. I still don't get it. I just don't get I mean, but you're right. I do think that fans just want to know who the MVP is. But players, I think, I think you're right. I think a player would rather win the Lindsay than the Hart. Right. So we'll see. A uh, Carey Price could win all three of them. He uh, should. Plus the Jennings. Yeah. Uh, so that could be a, a big, uh, big award ceremony for him. Uh, one more before I let you go. Uh, the founder of CapGeek.com, Matthew Weiss, yeah. uh, passed away earlier this week. I haven't had much time to give uh, give it a mention here on the show. Uh, I know, uh, you know what? When I Googled your name, the third thing that comes up is your piece on CapGeek going down. Oh, and, really? And so, I mean, I, I that must have gotten a lot of reads, uh, but. I mean, what, what did he mean to, to you and the work that, that you've done? Oh, it was so, I mean, it was just so, it was one of those things, you know it's really good when you start taking it for granted. You just kind of just, oh, this awesome thing exists, and you don't like, think twice about it. You don't worry about the credibility of it. You don't worry about whether the information's right or wrong. And uh, Craig Custance from ESPN wrote something about how all the GMs, they're like, this was even better than our internal stuff. So I didn't ever got to know him personally. I just had a couple email exchanges with him a few years ago, and... Basically, I asked him for proprietary information. He was like, you know, I'm a guy who, at the time, I worked for the league, and I'm like some guy with an NHL.com address being like, hey, can you send me spreadsheets of all your things for this dumb fantasy draft I was doing? And he was just like, yeah, sure. And I was like, I can't really link to your site. We don't do that on our site. I'm like, all I can do is put your name at the bottom. And he's like, I don't care. Sure, that's fine. So that site was just, for fans too, fans love that stuff. Fans love going there because you had the, um, the little GM thing where you could, you know, assign guys to the AHL, trade for guys, keep them under the cap. And he was just, from all accounts, he was just such a good dude. And I understand what Gary Bettman was doing when he was saying fans don't care about Cap Geek. It's a deflection. He doesn't want to just say the GMs don't want everybody to know about it. But I kind of thought that was a mildly insulting thing to say about this kid, especially when he's going through what he was going through at the time. Like, nobody cares about your site. His site was super popular among fans, among media, among everybody. And it's just such a sad story. It's just, it's just you know, uh, my heart goes out to the family. It really does. Only 39 years old and uh, really made a, an indelible mark on yeah. the game uh, for fans, for media, uh, and for everybody. And, uh, I mean, I, I wonder about Gary. Did Gary Bettman, do you think he knew what he was going through? I, I would hope so. I mean, it was public at the time when he, when he said it. I mean, it wasn't public. We knew he was, I mean, I, we knew he was going through a health situation, and he took the site down. Like, part of me was hoping that, it was a situation where he was going to sell the site and make millions. I was really hoping that's what it was. Yeah. Like, I didn't know personally what was going on. So that's, I, That was my first incident. Right. I was just like, man, I hope this kid gets paid off on this. He well, deserves Well, apparently he, he turned down yeah. 
tons offers. of offers. So, but kept, he, th that is what keeping it real. That is literally that is, the definition of keeping it real. He kept it suit, and I just I get what Gary Bettman's doing, but I mean, I would have just said, look, I think this is really popular, but right now there's not an appetite for it among the GMs and presidents and teams, as opposed to being like, nobody cared about that site. No, fans don't care about that site. I guarantee you, if you poll 10 people in here, five of them will know what Cap Geek is, because that's how popular it was. I had a lot of fun on that site, and uh, certainly it was something that helped me a tremendous amount uh, throughout the course of the work uh, that I've done. Uh, Dave Lozo, thank you for your time, man. Thanks for having me. And we lost a Tavares girl. I hope she's okay. Oh, well, there's, there is a crowd looking at the floor. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe she went down. All right, uh, that, is, uh, that is the voice of Dave Lozo. Islanders girl, I'm sure, is fine. We're just kidding around. <laughs> uh, this is Hockey Primetime. We're with you until 7 o'clock. Uh, when we return, we're talking New Jersey Devils. Our next guest uh, joins us from the SB Nation uh, Devils blog. His name is John Fisher. He is the founder and editor of In Lou We Trust. Uh, I want to find out if uh, he's still trusting In Lou after the last couple of years. So, so that's what's coming up next, or we're with you until 7 o'clock. It's Hockey Primetime on Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio.